Hello, good morning. I hope you're all well. Uh, welcome to our YouTube channel about Obzangani teaching. I'm Himanshu Burse. I'm a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist working in the UK. Uh, today, we are going to talk about history taking in gynecology. So, what is the importance of history taking? History taking is a very, very and possibly the most important and crucial part of any patient care. We get basic information before seeing any patient. It's very important. During history taking, you can build a rapport with the patient and it gives you an idea about what's going on. And with the by the time you finished taking the history you should have some idea as to what's exactly going on and that allows you in a best possible way to decide best investigation as well as plan for the management so name obviously that is most important and it is always better to call patients by their name you can always ask them how they like to be addressed sometimes by name or by surname. So it always sort of builds a rapport with the patient and gives them a level of comfort to speak to you in detail. Date of birth, that tells you about the age of the patient because there are certain issues which are common with certain age groups. Demographic as to where they live because there are certain conditions which are common to certain geographic areas as well as it gives you an idea if patient lives nearby the hospital or coming far from and that way you can plan their follow-ups to make it easy for them height weight and bmi gives you an idea about their bmi and if they are underweight normal bmi or overweight because that has bearing on their symptoms as well as your management and obviously you will talk about the presenting complaints for which they are seeing you so usually you would write down the presenting complaints one by one and then you will discuss or explore it further so the onset when did the complaint start how long it has been going on for and how has it progressed meaning is it this complaint remain the same has it got better or worse are there any aggravating factors for that complaint? Are there any relieving factors? Are there any associated symptoms? And usually you go in chronological order of these patients. For example, if somebody is coming to you with a complaint of say heavy periods, so you would ask them, when did they start really noticing that their periods are getting heavier? how long they think their periods have been heavier are they still heavy got heavier or got lighter are there any aggravating factors meaning uh, if there are any medication they are on which makes it worse are their periods heavy are they expecting are they having any spotting relieving factors means are they using hot water bottles taking regular painkillers time of work uh, any associated symptoms like nausea, vomiting, fever, like that. And you can change the way you ask them based on every different symptom. The history of menstrual cycle in any gynecological patient is very important. So always check if they are still having periods because if they are premenopausal, the bleeding has different connotations if they are menopausal the bleeding has different significance so you will always ask them if they still have a period when was their last period their past menstrual history you would ask in detail as to how many days they bleed how often they bleed do they consider their periods to be regular or irregular the amount of blood loss again it's a very subjective thingy so somebody might feel their periods are heavy when actually they are not or somebody feel their periods are lighter when they're actually not but usually we go with patient's word 
the amount of blood loss, any associated pain, and is there any intermenstrual or postcortical bleeding, and if there is any dyspareunia. Next, you will ask about the cervical smear, whether they are up to date or not, if they had any abnormal smears in the past, and if they were abnormal, did they have any further investigation or treatment received like colposcopy, cervical biopsy, or LETS, which is large loop exigen treat of the transformation zone. You will always ask them about smoking, the amount they smoke, alcohol consumption, which is mild, moderate, or heavy, and if they are on any other regular medications for other ailments. You will always ask them if they suffer from any major medical illnesses and their details, any major surgical illnesses, their details, if they had any surgeries in the past, the details of the surgeries, and any allergies to any medications or otherwise. And in gynecological patient, you'll always check for any family history of gynecological cancer. Examination, you would always, I have always said this to my trainees and students that your examination starts from the moment you greet the patient and get them to the consultation room. So you'll see how they are walking, how is their mobility, because it's important. Do you know if they're going to be able to get on the couch for examination, if they are having, experiencing any pain, uh, and their facial expressions as they're walking. What is their attitude? Do they feel like they are shut down and not very open about talking for with their problems? Are they comfortable? Are they appearing a bit hostile? And all these things are very important whenever you are examining the patient. You will always examine the abdomen from upper abdomen coming back to the lower abdomen. The simple rule is if the patient is saying it hurts in particular area, so you will always start your examination from the area where it is not painful. So if she is saying it hurts in the right eye leg fossa, you will start your examination from upper abdomen, then left eye leg fossa, and then in the end, you will come back to the right eye leg fossa. You will also see, is there any guarding, any rigidity? Are there any lumps and bumps noted on the abdomen? Then you will progress to per speculum examination. Obviously, you would have asked for a verbal consent. There is a chaperone. You will cover the patient appropriately, get ready on the couch, and then do a speculum examination. In speculum examination, your examination will start from the external examination. So you will look at the skin on vulva, labia majora, minora, then the introitus, is there any bleeding or discharge? Then you insert the speculum. Then you look at the vaginal walls, cervix, is os nulliparous, multiparous? Are there any growth on cervix, which could be a fibroid or a polyp or a cancerous growth? Is there any bleeding or discharge coming from cervix? And then you will do the internal examination if needed, or normally we scan these patients with a transvaginal scan. By that time, you should have done a provisional diagnosis. And to confirm your diagnosis, you will arrange further investigations that could be blood tests like full blood count or CA125 or other tumor markers. If you can scan, then you will also perform a transvaginal ultrasound scan. If you don't scan, you will refer them to the radiologist for a transvaginal scan or in large masses, they might need an abdominal as well as a transvaginal scan. Or sometimes if the mass is bigger, that means it won't be easily seen by scans, then you will arrange further scans like CT or an MRI to reach the diagnosis. By that time, with all these investigations, you would have confirmed your diagnosis and then you discuss possible management options, which could be medical or surgical, and then you plan for future management. You need to make sure that you clearly document all your consultations and you clearly communicate with the patient. Thank you. If you liked 
the presentation please subscribe our channel and ask others to subscribe as well if you want any specific topics to be covered feel free to put in comment section and we'll make a video for the same thank you